This is a risky stick-on, or well, a risk 5 stick-on. You stick it on your computer, plug in HDMI, USB, and the power button, and you get total remote control anywhere in the world, even if your computer locks up. What is it? Why does it exist? How is it so tiny? And how is it only 50 bucks? Its cheapest competitors are like 200. First, what is this thing? This is the Cypede Nano KVM, the smallest IP KVM I've ever seen. The hardware is based around the tiny postage stamp sized Leechy RV Nano with a tiny RISC-V processor. And the extra bits added on top turn it into a KVM. KVM stands for Keyboard, Video, and Mouse, and running over IP means you have total control over any computer or server you plug it into anywhere. How it does that, we'll get to soon. But one question I get a lot is why use an IP KVM like this at all? I mean, Microsoft has remote desktop, Apple has screen sharing, and even Raspberry Pi has Pi Connect now. Those are free, built-in, and they work great. But none of those work at all when your computer's locked up. Or off. Or a thousand miles away and the power just tripped and there's an error message stopping it from booting back up. An IP KVM is a separate tiny computer that runs completely independent of the computer it's controlling. High-end servers typically have this built in, and it's called something like IPMI, ID Rack, or Lights Out or Out of Band Management. Like the Ampere server in my rack runs OpenBMC, and I can log into it and get remote access. For sysadmins and home labbers, it's useful to not have to walk around to all their servers to manage them. But not every server has this built in. Even if they do, some servers require expensive subscriptions or the vendor stops giving out security updates. And old, unsupported remote access hardware with full control of your servers? That's a security nightmare. Even with something newer, if you care about security, alarm bells are probably going off in your head. If this tiny thing can straight up reboot your computer, go into the BIOS, and even install an OS, it's pretty dangerous to just let one of these things live online, right? Well, yeah. And that's one reason security of IP KVMs, and this one in particular, is under a lot of scrutiny. So before we test it out, let's get to the elephant in the room. Unlike other IP KVMs I've used before, like Pi KVM, Blee KVM, or Tiny Pilot, this one runs its own proprietary OS. And right now, at least, the source code isn't all open source. There's a long issue about it on GitHub, but the TLDR? Cypede said they won't open source the code until they either sell 10,000 units or get 2,000 stars on the repository. Why is this important? I mean, for other KVMs, even if they ship with a proprietary OS, you can usually get PyKVM running on them. PyKVM is the gold standard of open source remote access software, but PyKVM doesn't run on here, at least not yet. And that's because this uses a RISC-V chip. The CPU architecture is different, and some features aren't implemented the same as on the ARM CPUs used in the other KVMs. Cypede's working to get PyKVM built for RISC-V, but that's not ready yet. So right now, if you buy the Nano KVM, you're gonna run it with Cypede's proprietary OS. Why should you care? Well, some people don't, and that's fine. But since this product is made by a company in China using a RISC-V chip and software built in China, some people get nervous about potential backdoors or security risks. I mean, my iPhone was also made in China and runs a proprietary OS, but that OS was made by Apple in the US. So it's a matter of trust. But for anyone involved in open source, we trust software a lot more if we can build it ourselves. So a wait and see approach might be best. I was concerned when one user reported security holes in an earlier build, though most of those have been fixed now. The community's also been reverse engineering the build while Cypede waits. And GitHub user SCPcom points out Dell doesn't release everything for their solution either. But none of that matters at all if this hardware is a dud. Debate security in the comments, but let me show you how it works. In the Nano KVM box, you get the Nano KVM itself, a little breakout board that plugs into your computer's front panel header, a USB cable to plug from that into the Nano KVM, and some jumper cables in case you need them. You have to supply your own USB-C power adapter, at least for now. Someday they might have a PoE option too, and technically you could run it straight off your computer's USB power, but that could lead to some issues, so I'd rather power it from my own adapter. You plug in Ethernet, HDMI, and USB, and then plug in power to the USB-C aux port on the Nano KVM. It'll boot up, grab an IP address, and display everything on the built-in OLED. Now, this is the full $40 version. There's a light version without an OLED if you don't need it. But another nice feature of the full version is this enclosure with a handy mapping of what all the ports do, and it even has a QR code that links straight to the wiki. But if I go to the IP address in my browser, I get the Nano KVM UI. 
Right away, I can remote control the SBC I have it plugged into, just like I was plugged straight into it, and the latency is pretty good. Y you won't be doing remote gaming on here or anything, but it's fine for remote controlling a server or monitoring things. The Nano KVM UI parts are all tucked inside this bar at the top. There are options for things like the resolution and quality of the stream. There are features like a virtual keyboard if you're on a tablet, and that works great. Then there are options for different cursors, and options to mount ISOs or run user scripts. There's also direct terminal access, so you can log in as root to the KVM itself and run commands on it. That'll come in handy later. There are power controls, an option to send a wake on LAN packet to wake up a computer on the network, and there's even a built-in serial terminal. You can connect the Nano KVM to a serial port on any device, not just the computer it's hooked up to, and control it remotely. A handy feature, but I didn't get time to test that out yet. If you don't need to access any of these settings, you can collapse the tray, but it stays on top of your display, which could be annoying if you need to click underneath it. And it has built-in integration with TailScale, with a guide for setting that up. If you use TailScale, you can access the Nano KVM from anywhere in the world. WireGuard is also supported now. Now, remote access off your private network opens up its own security risks, but it's nice to have it supported up front, and it's a very convenient option. And I mentioned earlier terminal access would come in handy. While I was testing, a firmware update came out with improved streaming quality and a few bug fixes, so I went to install it. I used the check for update option, but I ran into this bug in the auto update feature. Cypede wrote a little Python script to force update the firmware, and it could be downloaded and run through the terminal interface. That worked, but that's just one issue I ran into testing this thing. I also discovered my MicroTik switches only support one gigabit or more. This thing only supports 100 megabits, and some newer switches don't support that. Then I ran into some slowdowns running through some NVIDIA graphics cards, which made it unusable on certain PCs. And one of my PC's motherboards just wouldn't boot at all because of a hardware bug I ran into, which Cypede says will be fixed in the next hardware revision. If your computer or SBC doesn't have USB port protections, a device like this can feed in 5 volts of power, leading to strange behaviors. And the version of Nano KVM I'm testing does backfeed 5 volts, so the Lychee Pi 3A I was testing had some weird boot issues until I unplugged the USB from here. There's a newer revision with a diode instead of a zero ohm resistor, and I'll probably bodge mine with a diode there just to be safe, but that's one theme I see with this thing. Cypede is shipping out Nano KVMs already, but they need a little more time in the oven. The idea of this thing is so cool. I'm used to paying at least 150 bucks for an IP KVM, usually more. At 40 bucks, I know a lot of people will just buy one without thinking. The price is right. But it needs a little more time before it can really deliver on its promise. I really want to recommend it, but I can't, at least not yet. If you want to try it out in an isolated environment, go for it. You can even get the light version for 20 bucks if you don't need power control. But for anything mission critical, I'd still recommend something like the Pi KVM V4 or the Blee KVM. There are a bunch of options out there now, and it's cool to see the wild ideas people come up with. Like the Blee KVM PCIe runs in a PCIe slot inside your computer, or this PiCast plugs straight into a tablet or laptop, no networking required. But most of these solutions are expensive, and they're way larger. There's plenty of room in the market for the Nano KVM, so I hope it succeeds. Follow the GitHub issues I linked in the description, and check my blog post for updates. And until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling. But Kai Pi Pop Do ISOs or run your users to the crud. Hardware revisions Cypede sent me. Goodness gracious. Backfeed perfect. Feed perfect. This is really hard to say. <laughs>